We've entered a new frontier of playoff hockey. No Penguins. No Capitals. No Mercy. That is the stage being set for the NHL this time around. It's my favorite time of the year, and watching the intensity and skill on display will make you hooked. It's a tournament where anyone has a legitimate chance at staking a claim of glory, and having your name etched on Lord Stanley's Cup is every player's dream. Sixteen teams fighting to the death for two months straight. The contenders are as follows. Welcome to Title Defense. Colorado, it's been a bit, but there are going to be a few variables thrown your way this time. I hope you don't mind. First of all, your team has been injured to hell and back this year. Every time someone returns, three other men skate right into bear traps. You struggled immensely until March, and team goaltending will be questioned no matter who's in net and no matter what stats you throw at people. Despite all of this bullshit, you're still going to be considered as one of the favorites to make it out of the West. Simply put, your talent and structure are still pretty good. It's the only perk you'll get. One more thing you're going to be without your captain. It might be for the rest of his career. Your complimentary fruit basket is in the green room. My assistant took the liberty of crushing it in the press. For symbolism's sake. There are two tiers of player in Dallas. At the top, you have blossoming superstars in Jake Ottinger, Miro Haskinen, and Jason Robertson. Then there's everyone else. Those three men are doing a damn good carry job this year. Plus a strong chorus of depth, I'll give credit to the rest of the roster. Boasting one of the best defenses in the West, thank you, Ottinger, they look to be a formidable foe in a sea of contenders. Best of all, Dallas gets a special perk for this go-around. Year one, Peter DeBoer. It doesn't matter if he stubbornly chucks Ryan Suter out with a top pair at all, but certainly guarantees a deep playoff run. And now, prepare to witness his greatest magic trick. Watching Ottinger become God himself. Being a fan of this team is like the orphan hoping his dad's finished buying cigarettes. You hope and you dream and you pray, yet all you get in the end is nothing. Not even disappointment, it's happened so many times you become numb to it. There are only so many times you can be told about Kirill Kaprizov and his legend. About the goaltending rounding into quality four. About Matthew Boldy emerging as an elite player every game. Then at the same time every year, the rug's pulled from under you. There's always a convenient excuse. This time it's injuries. First, Logan Stanley tried to tear Kaprizov's knees off in a bullshit check. He's at least back, but the next one's a killer. Eric Senek. Tell the Wild have been struggling. Without challenge, team offense and center depth is? You may as well throw up the white flag in the first round. Again. Nothing like popping your playoff cherry. One of the biggest surprises of the year has been Seattle morphing into what many expected of them last season. Becoming a playoff contender. With how they roll four potent scoring lines. Boasting a well-rounded defense and the ability to upend opponents at any time, they're a true foe. Just do yourself a huge favor and wipe what's between the pipes from your mind. So many resources put into goaltending for it to still be the epitome of chaos. Their tandem is an absolute liability who's made of Swiss cheese and can't make a clutch save if his life depended on it, Dan Martin Jones. That will single-handedly hold them back from any sort of greatness, sparring more chaos from Martin Jones. You're gonna get your asses kicked. And you'll have the biggest shit-eating grin while it's happening. You remember these guys? The most hated franchise in hockey at one point. It seems like they finally learned something. Instead of painting a gigantic target on your back every single year, lay low. Lurk in the shadows and wait to strike. They've been nothing special for the most part, but they've been wrecked by injury in key spots. No matter what's thrown at them, it's like their expansion year. They keep winning and are gunning for a cup yet again. I'd mentioned something about No Mark Stone, but they pulled the old Tampa Bay trick. Those clever bastards. Can they also use sorcery to heal up their destroyed goaltending unit? Their starter and their starter after him have been out long term. Vegas is going to squeeze the last bit of hockey out of Jonathan Quick's body. They're going to turn him into dust by the end of May. Just as I'd expect. Long have we yearned for the Oilers to get their shit together. Connor and Leon can only carry these fuckers so far before the weight crushes them. If only Edmonton had depth defense and goaltending, but that was a pipe dream. It may be cautious optimism, but they may have figured it out. Team defense is especially rounded into form thanks to a move that's paid itself out in gold. Matthias Ekholm has brought stability to a group that desperately needed it. But goaltending also seems to have gotten solved. No, not the guy they paid $25 million to. Stuart Skinner doing his best 2017 Cam Talbot impression. It's been more than enough. They've been on fire since the deadline, easily their best form entering the playoffs. 
And don't forget, they also have McDavid, Drysaddle, and the Nooch. Connor's season wasn't too bad. He only put up 150 points for the first time in decades. Strengthen your backs, boys. It's time for that generational power play to do some work. One of the strangest seasons witnessed in recent memory. A group that's eager to reassert themselves among the elite, blessed with talent throughout the roster only to deal with whatever the fuck was in net. Their main option was Jonathan Quick. He fell to shit. Next was Cal Peterson. He's buried six feet under in the AHL. In the ultimate trivia question, the savior of their season was a journeyman whose name sounds like a pseudonym. Phoenix Copley. Channeling unsung and unholy powers of Blaine Locker and the Hamburglar. It's been quite the adventure. Most of the doors are full of bottomless pits and poisonous snakes, but they've escaped doom. Jonas Corpusalo's been alright in it as well, however, you're up against Connor McDavid and company. They destroy teams on sight. With LA's weak penalty kill, please step aside and watch them light you up. Remember when we thought the Jets had their shit together in the middle of the season? That was a runner's eye. All we have now is a relentless slog in the hell of a poor man's very trots. Lightning in a bottle was zapped away after the All-Star break. Then they went into absolute freefall on and off the ice for weeks on end. Then all of Winnipeg shat their pants and did just enough to sneak into the playoffs. Congratulations, you made it because Calgary can't stop underachieving. The prizes could be glorious. The potential final moments of Dubois and Shifley in Winnipeg. Nothing that screams a special team on paper. Gunnar Hellebuck being the only thing dictating if they move on or get knocked out. It's about what I expect from the Jets every year. First round exit. Then again, the NHL really loves its chaos. On their deathbed, we were all ready to dance on the grave of the Bruins. Their core was aging. They fired their head coach in a power move. They were the trendy pick to miss the playoffs before the year. We failed to put the pillow on their head when they were in a coma. Channeling the spirit of every single player in their primes, Boston has become really damn good. How good? Oh, they only broke the record for most wins and points in a regular season. Nothing special. Just a core playing their lights out with actual offensive depth for days and some of the best goaltending in the league. Dominance not seen in a long time. All we wish for is an embarrassing loss in the first round. It'd be fucking hilarious. However, I doubt that scenario. And we will be witness to the class and decorum that Boston fans are known for. Can you win a goddamn series for once? Seriously, I'm sick and tired of seeing analytics think that they're the equivalent of the 80s Oilers only to shit the bed. I get they have high-end talent for days on end. I get they've overhauled every single damn thing to get them over the hump. I've seen the same movie play out over the past five years. Shit or fuck off the pot. You do realize it's statistically more likely to accidentally win a playoff series than it is to keep losing like they have. Arizona went on a deep run since they've won something. The Coyotes! Four goddamn wins. That's all I ask. No pressure. If you fail again, the course probably getting overhauled and everyone will be fired. Win and the reward will be sweeter than nectar. Losing to Boston. In nature, some predators disguise themselves as prey to ensnare their next meal into a trap. This has been Tampa Bay's specialty these past few seasons. Look at how feeble they are this year. Mired in a deep slump to end the season. Massive issues on defense that can't be fixed. Andre Vasilevsky unable to hold the damn. Throwing a shit ton for a Tanner Janot who face punched his way onto the injury report. All signs should point to an embarrassing series loss in the first round. This is what Tampa Bay wants you to think. Before you know it, Vasilevsky pitches four shutouts in a row, their power play strikes like lightning, and you're enveloped in their digestive tract. Regardless, I fully expect the lightning to lose considering their lack of momentum headed into the playoffs. In other news, I never goddamn learned. I respect a team that can overcome Paul Maurice trying to take a hatchet to any expectations they had. Back in January, the Panthers were at DEFCON 1, falling behind the pace with no depth to speak of and a goaltending situation descending to hell. Matthew Kachuk can only do so much, you know. Not with playoff Bob making appearances during the regular season and Spencer Knight taking a leave of absence. So how the hell did they make it to the dance? Two things. The return of Anthony Duclair and Alex Lyon playing his goddamn heart out. A hot streak in March and April saved their asses. But how long can Lion keep this up? And going up against Boston? You're more than likely alligator food. Stall Brothers being overexposed in this lineup will be tasty. Is this going to be the year they finally break past that wall that's hindered them in the past? Maybe. Team depth, talent, and quite possibly the best defense in hockey point to this reality. A hunger to go further than ever consumes them whole. 
perhaps that same ambition consumes their dreams in the end. It's happened the last few years. And considering what happened to Patches when he came back, perhaps it's a warning shot of things to come. Do you really trust that goalie tandem? They're solid, don't get me wrong, but reputations are dangerous. And they aren't merely anecdotal. The pressure on the Hurricanes is enormous. And you only hope it'll create diamonds out of this bunch. I'd feel better, but then you remember Andrei Svechnikov was taken by the hockey gods. It's not instant death, more like terminal illness. Feels good to finally rebuild a rebuild a rebuild, doesn't it? It's like hitting the lottery. It comes out of nowhere, you're jaded from years of nothing, and the euphoria hits you like a sack of bricks. As long as you don't piss it all away in a matter of months, things should be fine. With the emerging stars coming in all aspects of play, quality defensive structure for the first time in years, this has been an absolutely needed revelation. Identity starting to form. The Assembling Corps becoming a powerhouse. Vitek Vanacek becoming quite competent between the pipes. They've made big moves and have great promise in the future, but are they ready now? I wonder this with most free time I have. New Jersey has the tools to go far, but do they have the toolbox fully constructed? Time will tell. Question filled our minds for months. Will this team ever play up to their damn potential? Flashes of cup caliber play followed by days of endless flat tires. Stall development mixed with a lack of cohesion. Something had to be done. Moves needed to be made to realize their greatness. And it seems to have worked. Adding cup winners in Tarasenko and Kane revitalized a sluggish group and jettisoned them back to the elite of the league. Shesty stopping everything in his path with a forward core oozing with skill. The defense, it's okay, promising in spots, but lacks depth. There's your weakness. Strike their underbelly with precision and watch them crumble. Igor can't stop everything, boys. To be fair, that's what all their opponents say and it's never really worked out for them. Maybe this time will be different? Well, consider it like this. The Isles have trouble scoring goals with regularity. Their power play is a mess most games. They're an incredibly inconsistent team, barely escaping elimination thanks to a higher power. Slaughter should be the name of the game. The counter-argument? Ilya Sorokin. AKA the only thing making Long Island relevant. One of the best tendies in the game. A man who can turn the tides of war simply by existing. The Islanders have always been a team that lacks elite skill, but plays a well-rounded team game and overachieves to greatness. Can they do it again? The deadliest enemies are the ones you least expect. And these boys tend to fit that bill nearly every year. Even if they lose, I simply feel good for Bo Horvat being able to play on a real team. The time has come for endless battles to the death. It's unfortunate that it eventually has to end, but it's the only way a winner will be crowned. Speaking of who meets in the finals... Oh boy, there are a lot of fascinating choices to consider this go-around. An argument can be brought up about probably every single team for a push to the final. But in my eyes, there are only two popping up at me. Edmonton against the Rangers. The hottest team in the league against a team that's seemingly gotten its shit together. No, I'm not saying this is a petty jab at certain people that will go unmentioned. Just something about these two has me intrigued about their playoff upside. Oilers and Rangers fans, I'm so sorry for the humiliating exits you'll have in the first round. Has the puck now, down low for Gaudreau to Kachuk in the corner, back to Johnny Gaudreau. Gaudreau in front, feeds a pass to Leno, stopped by Ottinger, took it off high. Gaudreau, scores! 